What's up guys today? Yeah, so it's been a while since I've spoken about visas on this channel and there's a pretty good reason for that. But there were some big changes to the critical skills visa and given that one of my most popular videos is to do with that visa, I figured I'd probably owe you guys an update. So let's talk a little bit about the visa first and then we'll dive into the changes. So the critical skills visa is a visa that was made, that was introduced a couple of years ago by the government of South Africa to make it easier for foreign nationals with critical skills to come into South Africa and fill in the gaps because there is a pretty serious skills gap in SA. Now, the normal visa is really hard to get, like the normal work visa. Uh, whichever company is going to hire you under the normal work visa has to prove to the government of South Africa that they couldn't find anyone else in SA with the skills that you have, which is kind of hard in a country, in a country of like 50 million people. So you can imagine how amazing this visa is because uh, the burden to do that proving is not there anymore on the company. Anyways, that's just some background. I've split up this video into four, five-ish sections. I'm gonna start by talking about the skills that were added and then the skills that were removed. And then I'm gonna talk about the three big changes that have been made and I'll finish off with some closing thoughts. Okay. Skills added, this is like the only good news I have actually. So 28 new skills were added. Most of these are STEM related skills. A lot of them are also senior management positions. So like um, call center manager, CEO, and also STEM subject teachers. So if, you are, if you're a teacher in a STEM subject between grade eight and grade 12, you, congratulations, you're now a critical skill in South Africa. Um, that's, that's, that's all the good news I have. It's downhill from here. So they added 28 new skills, awesome, but they removed 60 plus skills. They, like the list went from 160 down to like 100, which is really sad. So if you are currently on a critical skills visa, you need to take a look at this list just to make sure you're still legible. Otherwise, you know, things could get really awkward. Some notable removals include South African PhD, so previously you could study towards a PhD, any PhD in South Africa, and you'd automatically qualify for permanent residency. That's not a thing anymore. So if you're currently studying towards a PhD with the idea that you're gonna get residency afterwards, you really need to start thinking of a plan B. Another shocker is everything health related is removed. So doctors, specialist doctors, pharmacists, nurses, vets, anything to do with the health sciences is removed except there's only one exception nurse educator so if you're a lecturer for nursing then you're safe everyone else including the nurses is no longer a critical skill which is really unfortunate um i see a trend here like there, there's there's definitely great need for teachers in south africa because they've added teaching positions and they have kept teaching positions and lecturing positions so I find that interesting. Anyways, I'm not gonna list everything. I'm gonna leave an, a link to an article that discusses this in a bit more detail. But um, yeah, that's, that's it for now. Okay, now next update is NQF levels. Now NQF is how South Africa measures education, your level of education. So you've got NQF level 10, which is the highest. So that's a PhD. Then you've got NQF level nine, which is a master's degree. So, they've increased the NQF level that's required for like a lot of these roles. So previously, if you could qualify with an NQF level seven, this might as might have been bumped to like an NQF level eight and so on. So you need to take another look at this because a lot of people study three year degrees, for example, um, because you know, it's a three year degree and don't do honors and would qualify for a critical skill but now you might need to actually have an honors degree to qualify for a critical skill so but i've, I've left a list with all these different skills so go check it out and see if you're still eligible so yeah that's that's the nqf level increase update the next update is a very sad one because i'm I, I i i it affects me three years ago anyways that's the permanent residency waiver. So, okay, so first of all, the critical skills visa requires five years of work experience. So you, you need five years of work experience on top of all the other requirements. And you also need to join a professional body in South Africa, which can be a massive hassle because they also have their own requirements. So this made it really hard for graduates from South Africa to like 
like foreign graduates in South Africa to get jobs after graduation because you obviously don't have all the experience. You wouldn't qualify for this visa. So in 2016, the, the minister, the foreign, the immigration minister created waivers. So basically, if you studied towards a critical skill in South Africa, you immediately qualify for permanent residency after you graduate, which will make it significantly easier to like look for jobs and stuff. That's not a thing anymore. Yeah, if you graduate from a South African university, you, you, you now need five years to get a critical skills visa. Uh, yeah, this one is really sad because I used this waiver to get my permanent res uh, residency. And it's really unfortunate that uh, I actually have a lot of friends that were waiting, like during the pandemic, they stopped uh, permanent residency applications. And then when they started again, they, they started by, they first removed this waiver and then like, yeah, it, it was really messed up. So this one hits really hard because it, yeah, I know it affects a lot of people that I know. So unfortunately, that's a thing. Anyways, moving on, uh, the next big change is the one year critical skills visa. So previously, uh, you didn't need a job app, uh, like a job offer to get the critical skills visa. You could apply for a critical skills visa without a job offer and they would give you a one-year visa which you can then use to go job hunting. Now that was very necessary because most companies in South Africa will not even look at your CV if you don't have a work visa. Um, there's lots of job hunting platforms that people use for job hunting they will ask you for a work visa if you're a foreigner and this critical this one year critical skills visa was a nice workaround there because you could get this one year visa come to SA for a year do your job hunting and once you get a job offer you can then apply for the five year visa that's not a thing anymore you now need a permanent job offer to apply for this visa which is really hard because most companies won't even look at you. Okay, so those are the major updates. Um, as for who's affected by these updates, well, if you currently hold a critical skills visa or you currently have permanent residency based on the old rules, then you're not affected. Your visa will continue being valid until it expires and your permanent residency is permanent. So if you wanna like go for citizenship, afterwards you can still do that or oh, also if you applied for critical skills visa before these updates were, were announced so before february 2022 then they're gonna evaluate your application using the old rules so that's still fine for those guys so to summarize you now need a solid permanent job offer before you can apply for the visa and also um, it's unfortunate that South Africa is making it harder especially for younger people to come and work in South Africa. Uh, I, I can understand for a lot of Africans SA is one of the countries you want to if you live in your home country SA is one of the best countries to move to because it's good it's got great job opportunities and it's still in Africa, so you don't have to leave Africa. Um, but there are other countries out there that have similar programs. There are other countries that have critical skills visas. So don't just focus all your energies on SA. Spread your wings. Look at other countries like Canada, European countries, and even Asian countries. Um, they also have similar programs and they might actually be easier sometimes. So I have a whole video that breaks down the critical skills visa application process. The same applies to the permanent residency application process. So if you're interested in, in that, most of what I said in that video still applies. I think everything actually applies. So yeah, cool. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section. Like the video for the YouTube or Gogo and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, have a good day.